welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. What's up guys? Welcome to the Do It Heartily channel. We're on day 217. I'm testing out a new microphone. That's why you don't see me right now. So I just wanted to see how this works. And as you can tell from the thumbnail, we have a special guest speaker, Brad Brewer. I've known Brad for many years and we were actually roommates in college at Bob Jones University. He is a great friend of mine. And uh, so I asked him, if he would be a guest speaker today. And uh, you guys already saw your questions, so I'm gonna turn it over to him. Please give him your undivided attention and watch the whole video. All right, guys, we love you, God loves you even more, and aloha. Hello and welcome to the Do It Hardly channel today. Uh, my name is Brad Brewer. I'm thankful for Pastor Adam for giving me the opportunity to speak to you folks today and hope that you're having a great day wherever you are. Hopefully it is warm there wherever you are. It is, I'm here currently in Indiana, and it is actually today, we got above freezing today for the first time in probably two weeks, so that was nice, but it's been pretty cold here. We just last weekend had 12 inches of snow, so it has been rather chilly. But anyway, glad to be here this, um, well, it's evening when I'm recording this, but I'm not sure what time it is when you were watching this, but we're glad, I'm glad to be here today. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Judges chapter 3. Judges chapter 3. What we're going to talk about today is a man named Shamgar. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible, not for necessarily because of the, uh, the fact that it's only one verse is the entirety of the story, but rather what it shows us about what we can do in the Lord. Uh, so J Judges chapter 3, we'll be reading in verse 31, but let's start with a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father God, I want to thank you for your many blessings to us, Lord. I pray that you would help us to learn from the story of Shamgar and also learn from later on what we're going to discuss as far as um, Timothy and this story there. I pray that you'd help these young people to see that they can do anything when they're doing it for you. If you have commanded them and you are bringing them to something, they can accomplish anything if they trust in you and look to bring you glory first. We thank you for your many blessings to us, Lord. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. So Judges chapter 3, if you want to follow along with me in your Bible, Judges um, chapter 3, verse 31, one verse here is the entirety of the story. We're going to break it down a little bit, but let's read the verse first and we'll go forward. Verse 31, and after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. Uh, in the book of Judges, we have actually, at this point, he is, Shamgar is the third judge for Israel. Um, there had been Othniel first, and then Ehud second, and then third was Shamgar. Shamgar, unfortunately, did not get nearly the notoriety or nearly the verses that some of the other judges did, but yet he did a really, really cool thing if we really break it down. So let's look at it again. It says, And after him was Shamgar the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad. So you're probably wondering, because I assume most of you don't go out and goad oxes that oxen, oxen, not oxes. You don't goad oxen that often. So you're probably wondering, Brad, what is an ox goad? Well, an ox goad, most of the time, there are different variations over the years, but most ox goad look very similar. They're a long, uh, almost like a, a staff of sorts. And at the end, there's a little hook. Uh, usually, some of them are a lot longer hooks, so you could almost grab animals with. Some are more just a little point, almost like a little finger coming off a pointy end. So literally, not a lot there, mostly just a staff with a pointy end on it. But if you see what it says here is that Shamgar, being used by the Lord as a judge, for, a judge of Israel, um, was able to sl slay or kill 600 Philistines. 600 Philistines. Can you imagine, first off, even if you had the most advanced weaponry imaginable, killing 600 men by yourself, would that be easy? No, it would not. It would be very difficult. Remember, this wasn't a time where they didn't have a plane. It wasn't like someone, you know. This was an opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one fighting with someone. And Shamgar fought 600 men by himself and was able to defeat them with an ox goat, a pointy stick, a stick with a hook on it. 
That is pretty wild. I don't know why I always loved that story as a kid, but I did because I thought that I thought about all the ways that that would look. Like, how did it go about that Shamgar was able to do that? We know that all the judges were used by the Lord to accomplish a certain purpose. At this point, that uh, Shamgar's purpose was to deliver Israel from the Philistines, and he did that. He killed 600 men of the ox goat. So you think, Brad, what does that mean? What does it tell us? It tells us that even when the Lord presents us with very huge odds or things that seem very difficult to us, I'm sure, and I, don't, and I have nothing to back this up, but I just think of Shamgar the way I would think and how I would be acting if I were Shamgar. And the Lord had instructed me, as I'm sure he did with Shamgar, to go and deliver the children of Israel. And all you're going to need is a ox goad, a pointy stick. I'm sure the discussions that I would have, at least internally with God, saying, God, I feel like this might not be enough to get the job done. We see no, nothing in God's word where Shamgar did that. He listened to the Lord, and he did what he was told to do, and God delivered the children of Israel by the hand of Shamgar. Very amazing stuff. So you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with me? Um, I'm obviously not going to be called to go out and defeat the Philistines. I'm not going to be called out to go and destroy the armies of, of some country for the Lord. What am I supposed to do? We have to think back to what our job is as Christians. Let's turn, if you would, over to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, is we're going we're gonna to read this morning or this evening. It said, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That's quite a list. But really what the, the grand scheme of it all is, be an example to the believers. Timothy was being told by the Apostle Paul here to not be afraid. I assume that based on the, the fact that, unfortunately, Timothy was having to be told this, that Timothy had unfortunately been met with some opposition to the fact that he was so young and that he was probably instructing people that were much older than him or maybe much more wise than him, and he was unsure or maybe he was discouraged a little bit in what he was supposed to do. And maybe you've been there. Maybe you've had to do something. Maybe you've had an opportunity to stand up for the Lord or, or uh, share the gospel with someone, but you were afraid to do it because I'm not very old or maybe I don't know as much as some other people do, so I'm afraid to say something. I've been there. Uh, I can know many, multiple times many opportunities I have had to share the gospel and unfortunately been afraid to do so for a variance of reasons, whether it be how old I was at the time, or maybe I was in a hurry and didn't want to get tied down to something. And you think all those things aren't good excuses, but they're excuses that, that come across our mind each and every day. So I understand that. But here's what, read again what uh, Timothy was told, let no man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Live your life, Timothy, in such a way that you're an example to the believers, that you're an example to those that you've been sent before to present the gospel to. So what about you? Where are you currently at in your life? Maybe you have the opportunity on a regular basis to share the gospel. Maybe you think, oh, because of the things we're going through right now in the world, I don't have a great opportunity, whether it be lockdowns or, you know, maybe I'm, you're not in school. I don't know who, who, where you are at this point. Maybe you're not in school right now. You don't see your friends. You don't see your relatives. You don't see those people that you would normally interact with. And maybe you think, how can I reach those people with the gospel? How can I be a good, um, someone that good, a good Christian that is following what God told us to do, which is to share the gospel, to preach the gospel, and to be a good example to those around us? How can I do that today? There's lots of ways to do that. Maybe it means that getting on social media and talking to some of your friends that you know need to hear the word of the Lord and you share that with them. That's always a great opportunity. Maybe you break out a pen and paper and do the unthinkable and actually write someone a letter and send that that way. Or pick up the phone and call someone. No matter where you are, you have the opportunity to be used by the Lord. Um, a lot of times we take the smallest opportunity to, to shy away from that and we say, see, that's a huge problem. We know that Moses did that, right? When Moses was supposed to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, he, gave, he told the Lord, said, listen, Lord, I can't be the one that leads them because I, I can't speak very well. I can't do that. I, I, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't listen to me. The Pharaoh wouldn't listen to me. It just wouldn't be a good situation. But God knew what he was doing. He used Moses to deliver the children of Israel. Even though they didn't always listen, 
He delivered them using Moses and the fact that even though Moses had a a speech impediment, we believe, that God was able to use him. So what I'm asking you, young people, is to think about your life. Think about the opportunities you've had to live for the, to serve the Lord by spreading the gospel, to serve the Lord by doing whatever it may be in your church or your, your community, to push forward the gospel. Are you taking those opportunities? Have you used excuses for why you shouldn't? It would have been very easy for Shamgar to look at the opportunity he had to deliver Israel and say what? Well, Lord... All I have is this pointy stick. How am I supposed to fight all of these men? Even if none of them had been uh, armed, which I'm sure they were. It would have been difficult to kill 600 men and deliver the children of Israel. But yet God told Shamgar that was what he's supposed to do. And Shamgar listened. And because Shamgar was looking to glorify God with his actions, we were able to see the great and mighty works he did. Even though it's just one verse. And young people, you may be thinking, Brad, I, I, I'm not going to have the opportunity to share the gospel like, like Timothy did or, or, to, or to do mighty things like Shamgar did. But you are able to do many things that God has for you. Don't sell yourself short. God didn't put you where you are today for no reason. He didn't put you in the, this moment hearing this message for no reason. There are things you can be doing to further the kingdom of God that, that, you, that you can do to reach others with the gospel, even if it's not directly. Being a good Christian testimony. Remember what, he, what was told to Timothy. It wasn't just about sharing the gospel. What else was it? It says, be a good example to the believers. This is back to verse 12. Be a good example to the believers in word and how you're speaking and what you're saying. In conversation, in the discussions you have, not just what you say to people, but even when you have those conversations one-on-one, make sure your conversation is in such a way that it's a good example for the Lord. Is in charity, how you love other people, how you look after other people's needs, show godly love, show godly charity in those ways. In spirit, in faith, in purity, how you live your life should be a direct picture of who Christ is. Now listen, I get it. I fail in that way on a consistent basis. It is not easy all the time. And I don't expect it's going to be easy for you now. But just as Pastor Edwin said many weeks ago in one of these uh, Do It Heartedly videos, the Christian life is not always going to be easy, but yet it is our responsibility that we should know we have to push forward. Be that good example. Don't allow excuses to keep you from serving the Lord, whether that be your age. Maybe it be your economic situation. Maybe it be the COVID situation. Whatever. Maybe it be the fact that you're scared and you just don't do well with people. Whatever it is, say, you know what? The Lord is bigger than X. Whatever that problem is, whatever it is that keeps you from doing what God would have you do, serving him wherever you are, growing where you're planted in the idea of a plant, whatever it is keeping you back, whatever it is that's making it difficult for you to do that, you have to realize one thing. The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. He gives a sound mind and the ability to do exactly what he's asked us to do. When Christ was leaving this world, he told his disciples to go and spread the gospel and to disciple those. Once they received Christ as their Lord and Savior, that wasn't the end. They were to go alongside those people and to disciple them. And that's what he's called you to do too explicitly or implicitly, whether it be directly by spreading the gospel at times, but also other times coming along someone and showing godly testimony, being a godly influence in their life. That is also what you can be doing. And just as Timothy was encouraged by the words of Paul here, I hope we, hopefully I'm encouraging you to be like Shamgar, to be like Timothy, despite being possibly faced with situations that are difficult, situations that make us nervous, situations that make us unfortunately sometimes scared and fearful, we're able to persevere and know that God is in control and he has not called us to do something that we cannot also have the ability to do. You don't have to be afraid. It is normal to be afraid. It is normal to be unsure of yourself. It is normal to be to lack confidence. But we can have confidence in the Lord. We know That all things work together for good to those that serve him. 
and those that are striving after him and wanting to put him first and bring him glory as their number one priority. So the question is, are you doing that? Maybe the reason is difficult for you to spread the gospel or to disciple people or to even be a good testimony at times is because you unfortunately aren't allowing the Lord through his word to work in your heart. Maybe you need to change that. Spend more time with him. When we lack a relationship with our Lord and Savior, it's not because the Lord hasn't been doing the right things in us. It's because we haven't been doing the right things in God's word. Take time to know your Savior. Take time to know your Creator. And he will bring you strength. He will bring you encouragement. He will bring you um, the ability and the, to get through that fear, to get f- through that insurity, to get past those excuses and reasons just like probably Timothy had to and just like Shamgar had to and many others like them in the Bible that are good examples of getting past difficulties that make them nervous and pushing forward. So I want to encourage you young people. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Allow yourself to be used for the Lord. Don't be afraid. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will come alongside you. But you also must be putting in the work daily in his word to strengthen yourself. Be like Shamgar. Face those difficult situations with the fervor and um, excitement knowing that the Lord has already given you the victory. You can have a great and mighty influence in the world around you. All you have to do is be willing to trust God and to look to do it for his glory. Let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you for your word. Thank you for these young people that are watching this video. I pray that each and every one of them would take these words and look at their heart and say, listen, am I being a good example? Am I allowing fear to control me? Am I allowing unsurety to control me or excuses to control me? But rather, Lord, let me be controlled by you. I pray that that would be their prayer and that they would look at their their own hearts and see how they can become more like your son, Jesus Christ. For for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys, and have a great day. And uh, once again, keep keep signing in here with the Do It Hardly channel. There's great content here on a regular basis. And uh, keep listening to Pastor Adam. He's a great guy, good friend of mine. Have a wonderful day.